The project came about uh, as part of a, an existing partnership with John Moores University. They come to our museum, they had a tour of the museum and particularly focusing on this new exhibition and the artwork within. And then we got a chance to get hands on with the objects within our collection and really try and bring that to life, promote those personal, lasting, emotional connections. We had a one day workshop responding to the kind of collection. Um, and it kind of, the work was really strong just from that. And it was really great to kind of get the students engaged in areas they probably wouldn't have necessarily, um, you know, been engaged in um, and responding to that. So that went really well. So um, we had our sort of second and third year students um, responding to the brief, um, which is around the themes raised by the legacy uh, collections. So the student's work was, was so strong, was so amazing that it was the first exhibition to be held in the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. building. It was really strong, had fantastic responses from a huge range of, of, the, of the public who engaged with it. Thousands of people came to see the artwork. And from our point of view, it was kind of, it was, it was good because we kind of operate in a kind of arts environment in the art school and we kind of produce work, but it kind of tends to get seen by people in the arts world. Um, so to actually kind of create something um, and actually put it out to an audience that we wouldn't usually necessarily engage with um, was uh, really valuable actually. So in terms of human rights, exploitation, discrimination, racism, and a very painful and difficult uh, subject, the answer from the students was really creative and um, and uh, with a very very high level of of uh, complexity. But we try to make a choice in which one it's corresponding one with the actual collection, and which which one it's visiting the collection through a modern type of of medium. So we make the choice to select two of them, but really the quality of all was amazing. I guess I wanted to do something to do with typography because I really like the typography of the era. And um, I noticed in the museum the segregation sign for the restrooms. And I thought it'd be quite interesting to maybe replicate that, but like for a modern society that's like a lot more accepting of, you know, equality. And so I thought I might want to represent that in the sign, but keeping it authentic in terms of like style and the method that they use to make it. A lot of the stuff that I was expecting to be done was like um, posters and um, like booklets and things, but I wanted to do something that was a bit different. So I went for doing a Snapchat filter. So it brings it back to like a younger audience as well. Um, it brings it, the ideas and processes that Martin Luther King could have used to a new generation so I wanted to make like a peaceful protest kind of thing that he used to use but in a more social media kind of way so I use the um, there's two filters that you can use that you can download and unlock for 24 hours and then you can take it out into the world and you can make your own protest basically we we really push the kind of thinking you know, challenging the students to kind of really think about how they can communicate something about a subject um, so they kind of do, we push that anyway I wouldn't say they necessarily engage though particularly with sort of slavery in the legacy collection so that was really valuable to kind of because they're really big subjects and it's kind of it's, it's how do you kind of respond to these and, and how, do you, how do you kind of do that um, in a way that's sensitive to the, the, the subjects you're dealing with um, particularly when you might not have had any kind of first hand experience I'm not the kind of person who would go out and march along and protest about things. I'd rather do it in my own kind of way. This is like how I would have done it if it was up to me. And um, it just puts you in the idea of being able to do it yourself if it's possible. We are a very specific museum. And we're usually fighting against three big ideas, three big fake ideas. One is that slavery, it's a uh, all things from the past. In fact, we all know, or we all black people know, that the legacy of slavery is still going on. The second idea is that slavery is things for black people. So 
black people interests. If you are if you are black people, you're interesting in slavery. If you're not, you can have a kind of curiosity about it, but not really an interest. And it's completely false because <clears throat> in terms of um, working class history and in terms of oppression, the, for example, in this part of UK, north of UK, the working class, the white working class had the same master than the African people in Caribbean. It was the same owner that owned the plantation in Caribbean and the mills in Manchester, for example. So we have this, this common history. And it's really not a question of color in, in terms of uh, slavery. So this is the second big error that people make, usually make. And the third big mistake is that people usually think that young people cannot be engaged or fighting against something, that it's too late, that it was the uh, old generation was able to do it, but now people are only on Facebook and things like that. So I think that this adventure that we live with the Liverpool John Moore University is a proof of that these three big ideas are, are totally false. Having my work shown here, it's kind of, it's, it's really exciting to be honest. It was, it was a bit overwhelming at first, I wasn't expecting it. It's really cool being able to be put into the museum. The opportunity is really good as well. Um, to get people to actually see my work and actually use it is amazing. In fact, the collaboration between a museum like the International Slavery Museum and the young artistic scene of Liverpool, it's not only important, it's crucial 